I speak to you in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Breath. Next to water, air is most important to us. This became quite real for us a couple of years ago when the pandemic first unfolded. And we watched in horror as people gasped for air, as their lungs filled with the virus. Terror could be seen in people's eyes, for they yearned for the very breath of life. Breath. It was the breath of God that poured out over all of creation and gave it life. It was the breath of God that breathed into the first human persons, Adam and Eve. And it was breath that breathed into the body of Job when he suffered and cried out to God for help. It was God's breath that filled him with life. Breath. In the Hebrew scriptures, when we speak of the Spirit of God, the Hebrew for spirit is ruha, breath. It is the Spirit of God which breathes life into our mortal bodies. It is the Spirit of God that gives us life to go out into the world to proclaim the great works of God. And it was that same Spirit that came down at Pentecost, 50 days after Easter, when the disciples were all gathered into a room, terrified, because they had no idea what they were to do now that their teacher and master had gone. Breath poured out upon them and gave them life and allowed them to breathe, breathe new life into the world. The Christian church very early on recognized the breath of God, the Holy Spirit, as the Lord and giver of life and that we, as God's people, share in the ministry of that Spirit. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. Now that's significant. We heard proclaim in the Gospel today, Jesus said to his disciples that, those who will come after him will do greater than the things he had done. And the ones he's speaking of are you and I. You and I are to breathe life into this world, into suffering, into pain. We are to breathe life where there is death. The Spirit is essential for the life of the church. We, as God's people, pray for that outpouring of Spirit upon us so that we may proclaim life and life to all. And never more before is this important now. When day after day we hear of stories of death, when we hear of gun violence, when we hear of war, and when we see people suffering on the street, this is the moment for the church to proclaim life. When so many people are turned away, when so many people are rejected, denied, life, we as a church are to go and proclaim life in those moments. Now, I've been with you for almost a year now. It's coming about next month or so. And I've had the great privilege over these past few months 
of sitting in this church on Thursdays. I initially had this plan to open up the church to let this space be a place for the entire community where people could come, pray, read, relax, whatever they wanted to do. I had no idea how important that time would be. Over the past many months, people have flowed and streamed into this church. I've sat and listened to people I say more in the loss of loved ones, of relationships lost, and of the burdens of life. And it became ever more evident to me that we as a church have a grand opportunity here, a tremendous opportunity, and I think the Holy Spirit is calling us to this, an opportunity to be a place of a generous and radical welcome to all, to all. And as I sat and I prayed in this church Thursday after Thursday, it has become my conviction that we, it is our mission, our ministry, to breathe life into this world. That we will welcome all God's people into space. That this church will be a church for all. And that no one will ever be denied. All too often the church has denied people. Whether because of race, gender, sexuality. But not this church. If we really believe that the Holy Spirit has come upon the church and has called us to breathe life into this world, then we must do that. And I will give myself to that. That this church must be a place where every human being can not only find a generous and warm welcome, but a place where we will come together and we will do whatever we can, whatever we can, to help them experience life to the full. Jesus told his disciples that much. In his great sermon of the Good Shepherd, he said, He has come so that we may have life and have life to the full. And so that's what we will do. No one will be rejected from this space. All will be welcomed in the space. But not only will they be welcomed into the space, but we will do everything in our power to breathe life, to proclaim life, where there's death, where there's hopelessness, and where there's fear. Because you, my friends, have been so generously given that Holy Spirit and now it's time for you to breathe life, that life of the Spirit, that breath, into this world. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful, and then kindle them the fire of your love. Amen.